In my last video, I did a comparison between the M3 Ultra and the M4 Max in the Mac Studio. There were a lot of comments about additional tests and apps for my next video, but one topic in particular kept coming up, and that's the surprising results in After Effects. I was a little under the weather this week, so most of my benchmarking was measured in Zs instead of seconds. I'm finally feeling a lot better, so I'll have that video comparing a ton of apps soon. But in the meantime, I wanted to get out a short video expanding on my tests with the After Effects timeline performance for those who were looking at handing Apple a small fortune in exchange for their sanity. Let's jump right in. The topic that came up the most is based around the timeline performance differences between the M4 Max and the M3 Ultra. In the last set of tests, the playback frame rate was astonishingly close between both devices, with the biggest differences being in the render time. I ran the tests again, first in the stable version of After Effects, and as you can see, both machines are playing back the project in full resolution at nearly identical frame rates. I also put up the activity monitor, and it seems that After Effects is putting a similar load on the CPU and GPU of both devices. The Ultra Just has more cores to work with, and that is what seems to make the difference with Adobe's concurrent frame rendering. Even though the playback frame rate of the uncatched timeline is similar in both, the added cores of the Ultra allow it to render additional frames and cache the entire timeline faster. This means that you can lower the idle time before caching to two seconds and get a pretty quick cache of your timeline so you can play it back in real time. It's worth mentioning that all of these tests are in the full resolution setting with the comp set to 1080p and 24 frames a second. I tried the timeline test out on half, third and quarter resolutions as well, and even this complex test project can play on a fresh timeline in quarter resolution in near real time and cache the entire 17 second project in 23 seconds on the max and 19 seconds on the Ultra. I split my projects between the Max and the Ultra for this video and the next, and I have to say that even though both machines are absolute beasts, my hat goes off to the Max, which is able to hold its own no matter what I throw at it. Both machines never hang on a task and allow me to work at a steady pace even as I continue to add layer after layer and effect on top of effect. And the best part of all of that unified memory is that when your whole project is in memory, the export takes seconds instead of minutes. If you have your mouse on the buy button and are considering one of these two machines for your next workstation, there are no wrong answers here. You literally cannot go wrong with either of these monsters for compositing work. Finishing up the stable version test shows the ultra caching all 413 frames in the time it took the max to get to 279, the Ultra had the whole 17 second timeline in memory at full resolution, ready for real time playback in two minutes and 20 seconds. If time is money and you need a Mac that can power through your projects as quickly as possible, the Ultra is the winner, hands down. It is the fastest Mac that I have ever used. Wildly enough, however, the Max wasn't too far behind and it was able to fit the entire project in its 128 gigabytes of memory just 40 seconds later at three minutes exactly. The crazy thing is that if you think that's impressive enough to warrant the purchase of a Mac Studio over the Ultra, wait until you see what the Max can do with the After Effects beta version. Spoiler alert, Adobe worked some magic squeezing some incredible performance out of both of these chips. The Ultra was able to cache the timeline 20 seconds faster while the Max gets a huge bump in performance cutting its time by an incredible 40 seconds. Render performance tells a similar story with the Ultra, with it shortening its render time by 12 seconds, while the Max blows my mind by cutting it down by over a minute. If you don't mind straying away from the stable version of After Effects, pairing the beta with the Max gets you performance on par with the fastest Ultra chip. As it stands with the current versions, there isn't a big enough performance gap between the Ultra and Max to justify the cost if you are a video professional working with After Effects. If you are looking for performance in other software, such as DaVinci Resolve, more complex work in Blender, Lightroom, and Photoshop, AAA Gaming, or LLMs. I'll have my mega review up soon. 
In the meantime, feel free to stick around and watch the beta timeline tests in real time if you're interested. Thanks again for stopping by the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.